In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can use the new Gemini 2.5 Pro model with the Ultralytics utilities. We're both going to go over the model, how we can use it for multimodalities. It can both use text, video, images, and so on. We're also going to see where you can find a Jupyter Notebook. We can open up a Google Colab Notebook and we'll basically just run through the steps. Image captioning, it can explain what's in the images. It can do update detection, so even get bounding boxes around it. We can just prompt the model. We send an API request to Gemini and Google. We will get the response back with it. So you're probably familiar with large language models. We type in text and so on, we get text back, but now we can both get text back and act like understand what's going on in images from the image that we are providing it. So let's just jump straight into it. First of all here, let's start inside Autolytics GitHub repository. So we both have Autolytics with YOLV8 and all those models, but we also have this notebook tab. So if you just start to go inside that one, you can spin up a ton of different examples, Colab notebooks, you can use that. You can use the free GPU resources in there as well. But if you go inside the notebooks tab, you can see at overview, so title and documentation for each of the different ones available. We have YouTube video for some of them, and then we also have some upcoming ones that we are recording. Discussion research papers, you can go more into the details, but make sure that you go in and check this one out, start it, and just keep it updated. Go in here if you need some resources, like we have all of it from the YouTube videos covered inside these ones. But if we go inside the notebooks, there we go. We can see we have all these available. And now if we go down how to use Google Gemini models for optic detection. So we both be used for like question and answering images, what's going on in images, image capturing, you can do a scene description, but even optic detection as well, where you can prompt it to return bounding boxes of specific object that you want to detect. So yeah, you can see we have the iPine B here. So it's basically just a Jupyter notebook but also a link to the Google Colab. We also have a blog post that you're gonna check out on the Autolytics blog. So how to get hands-on experience with Google Gemini 2.5 for different computer vision tasks. You can read a bit more about the details, but it's just object detection, image captioning, optical character recognition, and so on, which we're already covering. So this is a blog post if you want to know a bit more details, but we're pretty much covering in, in this video and also showing the examples. So right now, let's just open up the notebook. We can see the table of contents to the left. What is Google Gemini? You can see some of the benchmarks here. It is pretty much a state of the art model right now, but it's updating all the time. So make sure that you check which one is the newest because could drop a new model tomorrow, which is better. We can just swap it out and so on. And this is how you can do it with Ultralytics. So that's pretty good at reasoning and knowledge, science, math, you can see that it has pretty much stable eye performance, both compared to OpenAI, Claude, and the DeepSeek models. First of all here, we have our setup. So let's just run this one, run it, connect to a GPU. Doesn't really matter to use a GPU right now because we're going to use Google's GPU where we're basically just sending API calls. So first of all, we have installed Google Gen AI. So we're going to use their library. We have Autolytics, and then we can basically just use them together. So that's pretty much it. Then we can go down and run an inference function. First of all, you need to paste in your API key. So in Google Colab, you can also go over here to the left on the key, and then you can add your all your different secrets, tokens, API keys, and so on directly in here. And you can just toggle it on if you want this notebook to have access to it, and it will also save it. So you don't have to go take your API keys every time you open up a new Google Colab notebook. So this is pretty useful. Right now, I'm just going to grab this code. I'll just set it up here. Now we can see that we're connected. Throw in my code here so I can throw in my API key up here and we can take a look at the other code. But you just need to grab your API key. You can just right click here, go into the Google platform. It will just put it up here and you will be able to get your API key from here. So the only thing that you have to do from Google AI Studio, just hit get API key up here at the top. Then you're pretty much good to go. You can paste it into the Google Colab notebook. So now I've pasted in and ran the code with my API key. So now we should have connections to Google Gemini 2.5 Pro. And this is again, just an experimental model. New models are coming out all the time. 
if you want to change the models and new one will come out, we can just change it down here at the bottom with the model name. So yeah, let's try to go inside this link here too with the Gemini models. There we go. Then we can see the libraries. We can see all the models available. 2.5 Pro, 2.0 Flash, Flash Lite as well. So this is the one that we grabbed. We have preview. You can go in and take any of these models and use it in the exact same way as we're doing. You just copy it here, throw it into the Google Colab notebook, and we're pretty much good to go. So to run this product code, it's just going to run the inference, set up the inference function. We create contact, we take a prompt, and we can also throw in an image to it. We can control the temperature and so on, depending on what we want. If we have a lower temperature, it's going to be more deterministic. If you want to have less randomness in your responses and all that. So that's a very good factor to play around with, especially if you want structured output or the same output over and over. So yeah, we can download and read an image as well. You can specify a file name. You can drop in a file here or wherever you run it. You can run this notebook here in your own local environment, set up your own projects in a Python file around it too. We can go in and do a safe download. So right now we just have this boss example from Autolytics that we're going to download. We show it with OpenCV or return it with OpenCV and that's pretty much all. Just have some example images here that we can pass through as well. Results formatting, we just clean up the results. So if we have like this output result from the Gemini model, we can just strip it and basically just convert it into JSON or output that we can use on our end. So the response that we're going to get back is basically just a markdown formatting. So it will basically just have the JSON file as markdown. So we need to remove that formatting and then we can pass that directly into a JSON object. We can extract all the keys and the values from our JSON object could, for example, be bounding boxes and so on. The output that we get from the API call will just be a string. So that's why we need to do the formatting so we can convert it into JSON format and use it in our own code. Then we have a prompt here, detect the 2D bounding boxes of objects in image, fixed plotting here. So return just 2D bounding boxes and labels, no additional text. You could also go in and add different types of descriptions. It should describe what of these objects, give it a confidence score. It might be able to come up with that as well. So now we have the Gemini one example. We can find that if we go up here at the top, we have the under releases. If you have your own custom file name, make sure that you basically just go in and load it in here instead. So instead of throwing in the string, you'll just throw in the image name if you're not downloading run from Autolytics and want to run your own images. So let's now run this block of code and let's see what's going on. So first of all, we're going to download our image. We'll just take a few seconds. Then we're gonna run inference. So send the API call to Gemini, get the results back and have our annotator on top of it. So we should get similar results as this one here. If you don't provide anything, it's just going to use the bus.jpg file. It's still running our inference, but this is the whole flow that you can set up. You can prompt this to do anything. Right now, we just have our output prompt. Just return 2D boxes and labels. You could do scene description. You can throw in multiple images. The models here, they even support video as well. So you can do a description of a whole video. So now we got our response back. You can see that we have some downloading. And this is act like the output. So this is the output directly from Gemini with the bounding boxes and the labels. This is one, this is the one, this is just a standard image that was in the notebook already from this given example. So house plan, potter plan, bookshelf, picture frame, side table, chair, and so on. We get a pretty nice bounding box and even fit it pretty nicely around the objects. They're not perfect, but it gives a pretty good pretty good bounding box, in my opinion, without doing anything than just sending it to the API. If you don't provide anything here, it's basically just going to use the boss image. While we go down and take a look at some other examples, let's just run this one. So it also has reasoning capabilities, detect the 2D mounting boxes around highlight area of a morning light plus notebook on pizza table. So you can specifically prompt it to whatever you want. And again, it's gonna do the exact same thing here, but you just guide it more. It's the exact same way as if you're just talking with chat and chat GPT, Gemini, whatever. Now we just have image understanding as well from these multi-model models. So now we've got the res response back up here, person, person, traffic sign, boss, person. So it looks pretty good. Again, this is a slower model. There's different use cases for edge processing and also with these large language models. 
So again, the exact same thing we read in our image, we do inference, we just draw our bounding boxes. Let's run this example, we're going to download the image. We can do image captioning after to basically just, there we go, highlight the area of the morning light. So you can see the morning light coming through the windows. This is pretty awesome and probably even probably even possible to do with just its devices, notebook on PC table, potted plant near mirror. This is very awesome reasoning capabilities from these large language models. And again, so many different use cases could be used on top of this. Now we can do image captioning. So what's inside the image, generate a detailed captioning in the form short story, make four or five lines and start each sentence on a new line. If you just run this with the example, again, you can use your own images or not specify anything and it's going to use the default one and then you will get the results out here. So this is just a detailed description of the scene, scene description, image description. And again, you can combine it for videos as well. Sunlight built across the wooden desk, illuminating the quiet workspace, a laptop set open flanked by, by steaming red mock. So we can even see the steam here coming up from the mock, which is able to act like C in the image. So this is very detailed descriptions and pretty much like human level. And these models are only going to be better. If they come out with a new model, you just need to swap it out as I showed you a bit before. OCR is also good at just doing object optical like character recognition and get the precisions of them as well. So extract the text from the image. This is the only thing that we need to give it. Return just 2D bounding boxes, which will be locate location of the text areas and also the label. So just give an example here of a boarding pass. And this is just as any other OCR model. These language models here, they're just significantly better and doing a very good job in extracting all text in the image. Downloading first, we'll get the results, but it's going to be the exact same one in here. Try it out, go in, explore some more stuff that you can do with the Gemini 2.5 Pro model. Amazing multi-model reasoning capabilities on images and video. Tons of different use cases that you can apply on top of it, even combined it with edge processing as well. Hope you learned a ton. Definitely go and check it out. You have this notebook here available, and then I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.